Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Relocation with Nat, also known as Welcome to My World with Nat, Relocation Concierge, here in the beautiful Dominican Republic. I am in Cabarete today with my lovely neighbor, Alexandra. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Um, so we both live in Ocean Dream. Um, we actually both have ground floor apartments, and uh, it is the best, especially when you have kids. Yes, that's so true. It's key. That, it's so key. True. That's Absolutely. The key. And I really have been looking forward to having this conversation with you because you've been here a long time. Yep. You're I like moved. you were like you're a veteran. <laughs> <laughs> you can say so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somehow. And how long ago? I moved here uh, over twelve years ago. Twelve years ago. In the ago. beginning of two thousand ten. On your own. Yeah. On my own. On your own. And so, own. what drew you here? Because I mean, I can only imagine that in 2010 it wasn't as developed as it is now and no no no, no. it was not and we had like you know those cotton pads that we use like to put the lotion on so we had to go <laughs> to Puerto Plata to drive to La Serena to get them because they didn't Nothing have here. them here no so what no, brought you here siblings. um I just got to the point that I wanted to make my dream come true and I was always like trying to earn money have some assets and then one of my friends one evening told me like what stops you from earning there and I'm like oh yeah I'll try it so but the goal was not to move out of the country where I was born the goal was to live in the warm like weather yeah. in warm climate and yeah. surf every single morning so that was my dream that I go surf I jump in the water I feel that and then like happily I'm going to work so and then I just decided okay I'm gonna buy the ticket I bought the ticket and I got here and I never left and you never left. No. Well, yeah, and I met my husband, and yeah. I was moving around and everything, but like overall, not like overall. You haven't gone back to live in your home country. No, since no. And since you're then, from no. and you're from Russia. Yes, Saint yeah. Petersburg. And there's a lot of um, th I'm there's a huge Russian community here. It is. There are some people. I'm not communicating with all of them. No. Uh, I would say my point is just to be around like all the people in yeah. the world. Yeah. I'm like very and, cosmopolitan. And I think point. that the beauty of the Cabaret area is that it is so diverse. Well, the it whole is. North Coast. Yeah, the whole North Coast and yeah. Cabaret especially, yeah. and even yes. our Ocean Room. You know, like yeah. we get it together here at this beautiful gazebo at this yeah. table, and then we meet lots of different people. Absolutely. So. What made you choose though the DR? Like it, it was it, essentially it was the surfing and the weather. So in the begin, yeah, essentially that was it. And three years before that, I used to do windsurfing in Saint Petersburg, okay. but it was only summertime and wintertime. We used to go to Egypt <laughs> and like you know. Um, but then, like three years before I moved here in 2006, I was looking for the destination um, to go like for a month in wintertime, yeah. December and January where I didn't have to put on my wetsuit. So that was yes. the goal. So I started checking and there was that like website and it's not commercial, like wanna surf. Yeah. And I found that first website and I'm checking and I'm like, oh my God, cabaret and how is it possible? Yeah. And you won't believe the first time I got here to surf, I'm walking in the middle of cabaret and then boom, I see a friend from St. Petersburg, a windsurfer. And I'm like, what, what are, you are you doing here? It's like, like what are you doing here? Kind exactly. Of thing. Yeah. So that was surprising. And that's uh, what made me to come back because I knew yeah. that it's going to be great. And actually, when the first time I got here for the vacation, you know, uh, you know, that restaurant, Indian restaurant, Blue Moon. That yeah, yeah, yeah. Mountains? We're going to go there soon, folks. Don't worry. Yeah, that's an amazing place. And I was standing there on the top of the mountain oh. and I've never felt it that way. It's a beautiful way. view. Beautiful. But Stunning. you know, the smell and everything. And yeah. I just remember I told my friend, I think I could live here. And then like three years after that, here I am. There you are. Yeah. I'm a thing. So with all of this experience that you have, there must be things that you've just grown to love besides the surfing yeah. and the weather. What are some of the things that really stand out for you in this in this area? Um, kindness of people, mm, yeah, and their permanent smile on the face. And I was traveling a lot, and I lived in the United States for a while, and it was Florida, Miami, and I can immediately spot out the American person anywhere at the store, and like they always smile. They're like, there's a level. People, they always smile. There's a level of friendliness that yeah, uh, they that they are ready to give you the last thing. They are very hospitable, very kind, very nice people. 
and um, I just I love people and I love sunsets and sunrises. That's Absolutely. amazing. Absolutely. Island life is amazing. It is amazing. I'm I've become a great fan of buying fruit off the side of the road. <gasps> yes. Isn't it yeah. great as well? It is. And I mean, you have to be mindful because the prices, you know, vary from truck to truck. You know, I, I got some bananas the other day in the center of Cabrete. And, and they I charge was, you 10 pesos for No, one. five. Oh, yeah. well, they give you a price. You I see your see, local now. Well, I, I spoke in Spanish the whole way and he was very impressed that I spoke Spanish. And I thought, good on me, Natalie, for at least being able to communicate a basic, you know, so the language is really important and you speak fluently. Did it take you a long time to learn? No, Spanish is very easy. Spanish is very easy. It has actually a lot of similar words with Russian language. Yeah, the French That's language too well. for us, yeah. Yeah, so I used to speak French as well, but then Fra Spanish took over and now yeah. my French is like, ooh, went all the way down. So I have to practice with you one day. We will practice for sure. <laughs> now, um, so you have a son goes yes. to school here yeah and what does that look like what does that feel like for you know like schooling here I love it yeah Caribbean style you easy know, going flow. easy going flowing I, I still have like that structurized mind when I'm trying to keep him on the path of schedule just to make him uh, create that habit that there are certain things in life that you have to be accountable for but yeah. at the at the same time, I'm easy in case you know I'm dropping because into school five minutes late. Nobody's yes, gonna because put like check mark that as a tardy. Be because it is easy to sort of get lost in. I, I don't want to say the weather, but the lifestyle and the being here. No, it is. It is. So the schedule, and I know that you know even for us, um, making sure she goes to bed at a certain time so that she's rested for the next day. Yeah. And sometimes you, you know, you get caught up with, oh, playing in the pool and now it's eight o'clock, it's 8.15, it's 8.30, oh, yes. you know that's that? That's so true. And you, I know I felt torn, like you have to go to bed, yeah, but I'm having fun, it's warm, I'm in the pool with my friends. And sometimes you let it go because you're like, yeah, you're right, you're in the pool, it's a nice evening and why not, right? Yeah. Uh, yep. But you can't do that too much because then they get cranky. <laughs> Um, yes. there, but even after all of this time of being here, are there things that still, that still shock you or you, I call them the, yes, tell me driving and okay. traffic, <laughs> still I still. can't get over it. No, I'm much calm. I'm taking it as it is now, but I, I still, I, I just cannot, I cannot understand why people have no mindfulness whatsoever in their driving and they put their life at risk and they put my life at risk because if they fall under my wheels yeah then i'm the guilty one and like that like shakes my yeah, whole body absolutely but I, they're I so can't. happy about it then they turn to you and they say like they have oh no i'm sorry it's like and they just like drive fast away and there's from no you. fear that's part no of it. Like, there's, there's no, no fear. fear they're just i mean i've seen a couple of guys like lying down stomach on their you know, and going down the oh, highway, yes. and I think, oh, goodness. No, that's, I think, the 20 years old. Yeah, that's the youngins, what, the youngins. Yeah, yeah, yeah you know, we were there, too. <laughs> yeah, but I wasn't doing that. Um, so, I guess one of the things I love to share with pe through viewers, people who are chiming in, is you did this, I did this, I, and we, I feel like we did it in a similar way, you know, we sold everything and came down here and didn't look back. What are some of the things people need to consider before they come? Anything that, you know, you, if you think back, like... To be I, open. Okay. Uh, and, um, you know, I would say one thing that was um, painful insi insight sometimes when I see expats, people who are moving to a different country with their culture, they expect the locals to behave mm. like they want them to behave. And that I think disrespectfully, or sometimes I see people who are lazy to learn Spanish because it's a Spanish speaking country and they expect from locals some kind of, you to, know, to bend their like, way, like to be their servants. Yeah. So that is something that I would say, yeah, it's not that it frustrates me. No, but it's something that I would address to everyone who comes just to respect the locals and their traditions because they have a lot behind and they're actually very hard-working people. Oh they my have, goodness, yes. They are. 
Of course, there are always lazy people and rotten apples. Yeah, but that's talking. like but in every it's country. Everywhere in every yeah. country. Yeah. It's not. Uh, but it's not a novelty to the DR. Absolutely, and I'm really glad you brought that point up because I know that um, it's very. I think it's very easy to fall into that where. Yeah. Uh, because you could you could live here and not learn the language, but I think if you're going to commit, <laughs> commit to at least learning the basics. Yeah. The basics. And I think, like I told my banana story, I don't know if it, this week I shared, like I was able to have the full conversation and I think I got the Dominican price on the bananas and not... <laughs> that's the accomplishment. That's the accomplishment, not the gringo price, which was like a huge accomplishment, right? Yep. So any other tips and tricks? Just whenever you come, enjoy it. Enjoy yeah. every single second, go to the beach, explore. Yeah. Don't get you know, tangled in uh, certain emotions that everything's given. Yeah. I mean, because it is given from one point, but from another point, I think being grateful to what we get is the key that's going to bring love yeah. to our heart and mostly to people who actually, when they see you, they love you from the first second. But then they start creating like these things because people start reflecting like that yeah. towards them. But I think that's the main thing. I love it. Thank you so much. Thank you. Um, if you are considering a relocation and you're not sure where you are in the process, let's have a conversation. In the description, there is a link, a calendar link that you can click on. Book a call with me so we can have a conversation and see how I can help you get here. It doesn't cost a thing. It's just a conversation. Whatever you choose to do today, have an incredible day, and I'll see you in the next episode. Thank you, Alexandra. Thank you so much. Bye for now, everybody. Bye.